Um, welcome, everybody, and please take your seat. Um, okay. Uh, I'm Nick Lemon, the Dean of the Graduate School of Journalism, and uh, this is an event to celebrate the publication of a book called Covering America, which is a history of American journalism. Um, I'm certain it will soon be, if it isn't already, the standard history of American journalism for many years to come by this gentleman, Christopher B. Daly, um, who's a professor of journalism at Boston University and an old friend of mine. Um, to give you some idea of how far back we go, when I knew Chris, uh, there was a lot of hair up here <laughs> and no right. hair down here. So um, anyway, here's, here's what we're going to do. Um, we have a, a, a fairly intimate gathering, so I want to have, leave time for a lot of uh, Q&A. So mm -hmm. I'll spend about the first 30 minutes of this event um, doing sort of in, interrogating him about the book from this seat. And mm -hmm. then we'll go interactive with the audience for another 20 minutes or so. And then we have uh, free food and wine in the back, which I hope everybody will enjoy for a little while. OK, so. Thank you, Nick. Should be. OK, so um, uh, as journalists, we're always taught to uh, look for the local angle. So before we go to the grand themes of your book, <laughs> we're just going to do that. So mm -hmm. tell us about this guy, Joseph ah. Pulitzer, um, <laughs> he's who uh, founded this school. Well, Pulitzer is a fascinating character and a, a, a great place to start because he was one of the people who had probably uh, you know, one of the greatest uh, impacts on the field. Um, as some of you may know, he came to this country under very trying circumstances. He, he came as a uh, recruit to the Union Army in the middle of the Civil War. Uh, the Army was at that point so desperate for new recruits that uh, they were taking just about anybody, and they took this uh, very uh, unpromising uh, soldier with poor eyesight uh, but he managed to get through, survived the Civil War, and found himself after the war in a German-speaking part of the country in St. Louis. Uh, and through a combination of uh, tremendous effort, energy, pluck, and happy circumstances, he ended up a part owner of a newspaper in St. Louis, parlayed that into ownership of a failing newspaper here in New York City, and uh, started remaking the world of journalism by uh, his tremendous uh, willingness to experiment. Pulitzer would try almost anything in order to break through to the, to the mass circulation that he was seeking. So, you know, in short order, he started uh, throwing things into his newspaper uh, like um, comics. He's one of the first to publish uh, <coughs> regular Sunday comics, uh, famously, uh, had a comic called Hogan's Alley, which featured a little urchin wearing a yellow nightshirt. It's the origin of the phrase yellow journalism. Uh, and Pulitzer kept experimenting. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the things that he deserves credit for is um, discovering women. Now, not to say that, you know, they had been lost or anything, but Pulitzer <laughs> was working very hard to commercialize his newspaper, to make it a financial success, and worked very closely with advertisers. What they figured out together was that many of the purchasing decisions in a household are made by women. What should the children wear? <laughs> what soap should we use? What kind of sheets shall we buy? Uh, and these were the very things that uh, New York manufacturers and retailers wanted to, uh, you know, publicize. And so Pulitzer was thinking, well, how can I connect these women readers with these retailers? And, uh, you know, came upon a very good answer, which was maybe I should hire some women. And, you know, as we know, started hiring uh, some of the earliest full-time professional journalists. So Pulitzer, you know, put his stamp on, on, on lots of different things, and of course, we're sitting in a building that we, we owe to his legacy. Yeah, and in fact, um, we're, uh, I don't know if you know this, but we've just announced so a little historical uh, detour. So Pulitzer <laughs> made all this money at right. the world. 
uh, much to everybody's surprise, I want to enter this next because journalism, at that time, it was not widely known that journalism even was a commercial mm -hmm. thing to do in life. Um, and uh, he, in about the early 1890s, he had the idea of starting a school of journalism in a university and came to Columbia and started pitching them. And Columbia turned him down mm -hmm. on starting a school of journalism. He was very persistent, so it took basically 10 years to get Columbia to take his money, 1903. Right. And he set up the Pulitzer Prizes and this school. And the gift agreement says, the school shall be in a newly constructed building, and the building shall bear the name of the donor. Pulitzer died in uh, 1911. Right. The building opened in, the school opened in 1912. We're just celebrating our centennial. Building opened in 1913, and lo and behold, it bore the name journalism. It was the journalism <laughs> building, not the Pulitzer building. And there's various forms of speculation about why that was. Mm. Uh, so we just rectified that. And if you saw that big scaffold outside, oh. uh, these are guys carving Mr. Pulitzer's name above our doorway. <laughs> and as of April 20th, we're going to be named the Pulitzer Building. Finally. Well, it's about time, Nick. Yes. I would say that's um, overdue. Great. So, um, you know, one, one just, there's so many things in this book to talk about that we're just going to scratch the surface. Mm. But uh, just, uh, I don't know if anybody here has seen the museum in Washington, D.C., um, which is a uh, monument to the last moment when the news business had enough resources to build things like that. <laughs> right. And it has uh, this stone tablet in front that's about three stories high mm -hmm. uh, that, that kind of makes the Ten Commandments look like a asterisk or an like after a rough draft yeah. with, the, <laughs> with the, uh, the, the First Amendment carved in it, the mm -hmm. sacred text of journalism. So what were the founders, what did they have in mind when they wrote the First Amendment? Did hmm. they, uh, what was journalism then? What was the press that they were, uh, that they were uh, alluding to? Very, very important question because, and I think it has a lot, uh, a lot of bearing on, on what's going on today in journalism. So, you know, if we look at the 18th century, uh, journalism started off in this country in, in 1704 as a very uh, puny and unimpressive uh, kind of enterprise. The very first newspapers were very small, had circulations in the dozens and then in the, maybe in the low hundreds, uh, and they were really intimidated by the other institutions in that society, especially church and state. And compared to them, these newspapers were uh, not at all important and uh, you know, very much under their thumbs. But what you see over the course of the next couple of decades is a process by which those newspapers become increasingly political in what they focus on, and they get to be bolder and bolder, for reasons I go into in the book, so that by the 1760s, and certainly by 1770, they are in full throat uh, expressing themselves on all kinds of the political issues of the day, on uh, independence from Britain or uh, reconciliation with the mother country, uh, on what, if we break, what kind of a government should we have, all these huge questions. Uh, and the press becomes quite polemical during this period. Uh, it's often uh, uh, the, the products that our, our people are reading are often produced anonymously or pseudonymously by people who don't want to be known uh, as political partisans. And that's the, that, that, that's the nature of the press that the founders were familiar with. That press was very local. It was small scale. It was very polemical. Most of those newspapers had very little uh, what we would think of as original reporting, you know, of nonfiction material that the, the staff had generated. That was not really in the cards. So, you know, as we see, uh, you know, a, a return to a more polemical style today in journalism, um, it's not something that, you know, is unanticipated or doesn't fit into this constitutional scheme. Who invented reporters? Ah. <laughs> I mean, because we tend to think of reporters and journalists as synonyms, uh, but that, that was not Not at case. all. Not at all. No, no, no. Uh, it really wasn't until about the 1830s, uh, again, here in New York City, uh, another 
really inventive uh, journalist named Benjamin Day created the first